Hey guys, it's Steven here back with another video. Manchester City beat Atletico Madrid last night 1-0 in the Champions League quarterfinals and it's a very, very satisfying result. A very satisfying game of football because we got past a horrible, aggressive, physical team and we did it and we deserved it. I want to say thank you very much to One Football for Team to sponsor this channel. Of course, if you want all the stats and information and I'm going to chat about some stats about one of our very special players, Kevin De Bruyne, in a bit that I've taken from One Football. Go and download the app right now by clicking the link in the description or scanning that QR. QR code next to my face. It'd be massively appreciated. So do it right now. One Football is a fantastic app. I've been using it for over four years now. Over 10 million people have downloaded it for the big price of absolutely nothing. And it helps support my channel now. So go download One Football. You will not regret it, I promise you. Once again, I recorded this last night in the hotel after the game, knowing that I'd be right now as you're watching this, I'm probably on a plane to Korea somewhere. So I'm recording it on my phone. I'm recording the audio on the laptop. It probably isn't the best looking. I apologise. But still, I wanted to get a video out to you guys because last night was absolutely worth talking about. Well, it's still tonight as I'm recording this. But last night really was worth talking about. City were... I thought they were excellent given the context of the game. Not every game is going to be special, but there were still loads of very good performances to talk from this. I'm going to start with the only place I really can start. Phil Foden, man. Philip Walter Foden is an absolutely special footballer. I have been dying and dying to see Phil Foden face the goal for some time now. There is not many things better in football than Phil Foden in full flight. He was absolutely imperious last night. Honestly, um, he's such a special player. In that cameo, he would produce so many moments of magic. Uh, of course, the most telling was the assist, the way he took a couple of touches, drew players towards him, and that beautiful slide of through through ball to Kevin De Bruyne, the perfect way for him to run onto it and put it in the bottom corner. The game-winning moment, literally simple as that. But it wasn't just that as well. It was, of course, of that majestic outside of the boot pass, which is a work of art, uh, which created a huge moment. There was that incredible like Iniesta dribble on the sideline where he went past three or four players just so skillful so intelligent so alive uh, the thing we saw against Liverpool a couple of years back actually that in general he was just sparky he was just intelligent he was just creative he really changed the flow of the game and what I love about uh, Phil Foden is he absolutely comes alive in games like this he was absolutely eager eager to make an impression I was on the live score watch along last night and I said at half time I want to see Phil Foden come on simply because he really knows how to step up in big games and he proved it he really did he absolutely was ready for that he really wanted to prove people wrong he really wanted to come on and show Guardiola exactly what he was missing out he thrives in the Champions League nights and that's the sign of great players great players step up on great big nights and that's what Phil Foden did and I absolutely love him for that. He's a special talent. He's going to get better and better and better. And he just gets it. He loves this club and he thrives in the biggest games. And that's what the best players do. Phil Foden, <laughs> I know he's been sacrificial last year as the false nine. But next year when we've got a strike, he's going to be facing the goal. I don't care who he's dropped because in my opinion, he's the most talented out of a lot of them. I really think he's the most special forward player that we've got. And I cannot wait to see him more next season. Uh, of course, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Kevin De Bruyne. And I put the bottom goal De Bruyne. I put it for a reason because I think it's quietly gone on the radar that Kevin De Bruyne is no longer really the assist guy, though of course he does get assists because he's Kevin De Bruyne. He's the goal guy. Now, this year, he's, I've only gone back two seasons, but I was looking at the 1920 season stats. We had 16 goals, but 23 assists in 48 games. Uh, 23 assists. Last season, he had 10 goals, but 18 assists. So his assists always outstripped by seven and then eight, respectively, his amount of goals. But this year, it's really interesting. 13 goals and only eight assists. He actually has substantially more goals than he does assists, which I think fascinating. So Kevin De Bruyne this season has become a goal scorer, essentially. He's become the guy who scores the goals as opposed to create the goals. This may be because, obviously, the way that we play has changed. There was no striking for his Amy's crosses at, so he's taken more of an advanced thing. But whatever it is, I really like it. I love that Kevin De Bruyne is getting forward and finding a way to affect games in a way that, that we absolutely need him to. If there's no striker, he'll do it himself and he'll score goals. Uh, and he's doing that. He's already scored more than he did last season uh, already. He's got three more than he did last season. Um, he, not as many as the season before, but then he's played considerably less games. He's on to score more than he did the season before. I've got, the, sorry, in the 1920 season, and I've got no doubt that he probably will do as well. Right now, Kevin De Bruyne absolutely has the bit between his team, and he's scoring goals. He's dragging us to games, and I love it. You cannot deny that Kevin De Bruyne's got his fitness back, and you cannot deny that extra bit of quality that he's got. I love Kevin De Bruyne. Goal De Bruyne. For everything we learned, we didn't learn it. I kind of knew it, but I was put, Ake is good. 
He's really good. Who would have thought that this player that Guardiola wanted to sign <laughs> that they'd scouted was actually a really good footballer? Who would have fucking thought it, hey? It's almost like they know what they're doing. It's almost like Cheeky knows what he's doing. It's almost like, actually, these players that we thought were good, they're actually really good footballers. It's almost like he's a good player. It's as simple as that. Ake last night was excellent in the face of uh, a very physical Atletico Madrid. I'm not saying you know he changed the game or anything like that, but he clearly, clearly, absolutely deserves his place in the squad. And he's been getting better and better and better with every passing month and every passing match. And of course, now we've had two excellent performances back to back. He was very good against Burnley. And he was very good again, again last night. He clearly is a very valuable and useful member of this squad. And we need to realise that City don't really tend to sign bad players. And Ake was never a bad player. He was one brought in and never really got a chance to get a run of games and now he's showing his usefulness in this squad I'm dead happy for Ake uh, because good play, good, good people deserve uh, good praise and he's a good person and a good player as well Ake buzzing for him fourth thing we learned is that Atletico hate Jack Grealish like what was all that about when Atletico uh, when Grealish came on I don't know what caused the red miss but <laughs> They fucking hate him. <laughs> they really, really do hate Jack Grealish. They were all over him. They were like, you know, like bees to honey. Or I don't know, like um, a, a, a bull to a red flag or whatever. That's a myth, that. But either way, they couldn't stand Jack Grealish. They were, they were going at him constantly from the very first minute. They were really, really adamant that they wanted to get Jack Grealish. I mean... All right, whatever he's done, I don't know, but um, he really got under the skin. And it's weird because Jack Grealish has always been a guy who's been kicked to pieces. So I don't know why they were expecting a reaction. Grealish literally gets kicked to pieces always. He gets fouled so often. So if they thought that would be get like a reaction out of him, they just don't understand Jack Grealish. It's weird. He's always been kicked. He's always been fouled, but he's never really reacted. So it was weird. They definitely tried to get to him. They definitely tried to wind him up. But it was a strange decision to make. He has to start the next leg, in my opinion. They will absolutely go at him again. He will absolutely go down as well. He will take the fouls. He will roll about. He will waste time. And do you know what? If that's the game they want to play, that's the game you'll be happy to play as well. He will get under their skin. He will wind them up. And he'll give them a taste of their own disgusting medicine sometimes. And I really like that. And of course, as well, it buys time for us. And if they want to disrupt their own momentum and game, so be it, let him do it. Either way, a really good cameo, a really intelligent cameo. And he worked really hard as well. We've got to give him the credit for that. Defensively, he was excellent. Finally, we learned that that was the perfect preparation for the weekend. Uh, Burnley and now this. We've had a nice sliding scale of difficulty, which leads us perfectly into the Liverpool game. Uh, and honestly, I was already confident about this game anyway because I trusted the players to step up. And you should trust these players because they've earned it. That doesn't mean we're going to win because things can happen. Liverpool could be brilliant. We could play poorly. But largely, I do trust these players broadly to go into this game and play well because they've earned that right and I think the preparation's been excellent since the international break we've been really good Burnley was a nice like get goer we got going again and we were really good and this was a battle and a war um, but it wasn't too bad it wasn't too overly tiring too physical and largely we had an awful lot of practice at breaking down a very good side Liverpool will actually leave a little bit more space than Letigo did and they'll be more aggressive one thing that this game will actually definitely do for Man City is focus us and it's nothing that's going to get you ready more for a game of this stature than a game against Atletico because they will battle and they will go at you and they'll be physical and they'll be a horrible. And Atletico, it was a really good preparation. Very different sides, but at the same time, they will they tested our focus, our concentration, our wits, uh, our work rate um, and our persistence. And you'll need all those in abundance if you're going to play against Liverpool and win in a game of this magnitude. And this game is absolutely huge, do not get me wrong. But I do trust these players. I do trust Guardiola. I do trust this squad. I do think we're in a good place right now. Our form hasn't been excellent for some time, but the last couple of games have been really good. The performances have been decent. And of course, as well, before the international break with the FA Cup win, things look pretty solid right now. That was some good preparation for a very big game. Um, obviously, you know, uh, anything could happen against Liverpool because they're a fantastic team. But having watched Liverpool as well tonight, they are, you can get at them defensively. Don't get me wrong, Alexander Arnold is an incredible passer of the ball and he will create things. And Salah is brilliant. You know, Mane is fantastic and Luis Diaz also a good signing. And they've got a good midfield these days with Keita, Thiago, Fabinho, and so on, and Henderson. But I do fancy our chances at the Etihad. I do. I think the fans will be up for it. I think it'll be a cracking game. And that was perfect preparation. Guys, that was a fantastic game of football. Uh, 
Obviously, the result was only 1-0, but the magnitude of that performance, well, I guess what it'll mean for the players is they'll be really happy with that. Uh, and the manner of the win was really, really important. Sometimes it's not always about the goals of how many you get. It's about how you do it. And this was really, really impressive, I thought. But let me know down in the comments what you thought of the game, the five things that you learned from it. Um, I'll try and get some videos done when I'm in Korea. I am watching the game in Korea, which is going to be crazy, the Liverpool game. Uh, this will all be clear why I'm there, by the way, very soon, hopefully. Uh, but for now, though, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, watch a match from from last night big love to all of you you're all absolutely awesome thanks to the patrons and members currently scrolling down at the bottom of the screen usual service will resume soon I promise you in a bit